Welcome to Church at Home, everyone. We have an awesome service ahead, so we're very stoked that you're here. Yes, get pumped. If you're not a morning person. No, I'm already pumped. You're already no, pumped. No, no, but if you're Sorry. not a morning person like me, get pumped. <laughs> yes. It's worth it. Trust me, start energy early. It's going to be big. Yes. Uh, if it's your first time, welcome. Let us know in the comments uh, where you're tuning in from. Could be literally anywhere. Uh, how, how do you take your coffee? All the things. Yeah, I take my coffee comment. like right now. Yes. That's how I take my coffee. As soon as possible. Give it to me, please. <laughs> I take my coffee all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> awake me. Is something something smart <laughs> that awake says me. awake me. That's how I take my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how do you take yours? Let us know. Um, but hey, we also have heaps of stuff going on around this place that you can get amongst. Uh, there's life groups, which is where small groups of people meet in each other's homes and they eat things. Yes. Uh, we have an active ministry where you can get moving with us. And we have a young adults worship night coming up. So if you're local and a young adult, be fun. get amongst that. Lots to be a part of. So click the link in the description to connect with us or download the app and see all the things happening around the place. Yeah, the app is super fun. Very cool. Also, how can we be praying for you this week? We do believe in the power of prayer mm -hmm. uh, that, and that our God hears and cares and heals and provides and is just present um, in our day to day. Uh, and just this week, we had somebody in our community um, but who were praying for their daughter. And I'll read it out. Uh, they've said she has serious fatigue and chronic asthma. Can we pray for healing and increased energy so she can enjoy being an 11 year old. Mm. Uh, and my gosh, there's so much going around, isn't there? There's so many families struggling in, in this winter. So, um, so maybe we can pray together now over that uh, for healing and protection so in this season. Mm. We'll pray now, God, uh, we love you and we trust you and we ask for your protection and your healing uh, over this family. Um, yeah, we pray that this little girl can be the 11 year old um, that uh, we want her to be running around and free of um, asthma, free of sickness. Um, yeah, pr I just pray for healing there um, and that you can help that family. We also pray for other families who are struggling still with COVID and still with the flu um, and just this general sickness that's going around. We pray for healing over that. Um, yeah, and your presence with us. When we're stuck at home, uh, sick with our coffees, that uh, it's not too bad and that you know we, we can manage ourselves and, and just spend that time with you. We love you so much in your name, amen. Amen. Yeah, whatever, whatever you're needing, whatever we can support you in, uh, you can let us know and get prayer via the link. Yes, I love it. Hey, speaking of which, I was reading this week um, my Bible and just was really challenged. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> reading my Bible. Power move. Now I've got to find the verse actually, where is it? <laughs> um, you know, it's been a, a relatively tough season for Josh and I being in the building industry. Um, financially, it's, it's been full on. And, you know, it was like God reminding me, he's, uh, this verse in Matthew 11, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And it was just a reminder to me that for, me, for us, giving is not just an act of generosity. It is an act of trust. It's a way yeah. of giving over our burdens to Jesus and saying, you know what? This is not ours to carry. This is not ours to worry about. Yeah. We trust you with everything we have. We yeah. will continue to give even when it's tough. It's really so good. can I just encourage you, if you're in the same situation, to trust that uh, that God has got you, that he is faithful, even when we can't see it right now. Yeah, 100%. That's amazing. Mm. Uh, well, let's, let's get our hearts prepared for what Trish is going to share with some worship. We are going to dance. We are going to sing. We are going to praise him for who he is.
Well, good morning, everyone. So here we are. We find ourselves in the final week of our series on integrity. Let your yes be yes. I don't know about you, but I feel I have been challenged through this series, challenged in a good way to think about how I live a life of integrity, how I walk the path of integrity each day. Integrity in our words, our actions, our character, and our choices. Letting our yes be yes. Absorbing this wisdom helps us to grow in godly kingdom character. Do you remember in week one, Marcy talked about this amazing sculpture, Michelangelo's David. He has fractures in his ankles. He will collapse under his own weight. He will fall due to his own flaws. The statue of David is lacking in integrity. Marcy gave us two meanings of integrity, the state of being whole and undivided. Are things still as they should be? And the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Our character. Are we whole and undivided in our character or do we say one thing and do another? As followers of Jesus, his disciples, we are to be obedient in what he calls us to, in following him. In John, it says, if you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. To be a disciple is to deliberately seek to grow our character and actions in the likeness of Jesus to follow after him, not seeking perfection, but in a process of becoming. That is what we are here for. We all have cracks and this series is equipping us to do what we can to help us not to fall. Marcy gave us our first fridge note. Let your yes be yes. Saying integrity is the resolve and courage to do the right and noble thing, even if it costs you. In week two, Marcy then went on to challenge us to play the movie forward. When you walk with integrity, you take the long view. You play the movie forward. I pictured an old fashioned film camera, one that has film so that we can look forward, we can see what the impact of our actions may be. We need to think about the choices we make now and play the movie forward to see how our choices will impact those around us. Thinking about the ultimate direction we are going in rather than the immediate pleasure of the moment. Who do you want to be? What do you want your legacy to be? In week three, Rick challenged us to think about what is your bowl of stew? Remember he shared with us about Esau's journey, his battle with his appetite, that thing that keeps us from doing what we ought to do, his appetite that undermined his integrity. Rick reminded us that through Jesus, there is always a way back. There is always a second chance. Devotion to Jesus will gradually strengthen us to be in control of our appetites. Week four, and Sin shared so well with us the principle of the path. Integrity, like faith and priorities, is personal but never private. Eventually, people will see the path you've taken. We have choices to make. We choose the direction that will determine our destination. Who do you want to be like? 
We're all in the process of becoming. Singe gave us this rubber hitting the road definition of integrity, doing what you ought to, even when it costs you. And last week, Mark shared with us, what does your win look like? Challenging us to build our integrity muscle through the spiritual practice of responding with the small yeses that set us up for a big win when the issues come our way, which they will. And I managed to sneak this photo of Mark flexing those integrity muscles and showing us how it is done too. Mark shared with us that integrity has three outcomes. Credibility, being trusted and believed. Confidence, when others can rely on you and confide when people entrust you with their inner thoughts. Letting your yes be yes is your win, regardless of the outcome. Wow, what a series. If you missed any, check them out on YouTube in our Church at Home services. So many amazing life skills and hints. So today, let's wrap this up. Let's get to the end game. Integrity, doing what we ought to. The resolve, the courage to do what is right, to reach others even when, especially when it costs us. We could have a clip of the Avengers end game here, but we have a much better example. We have the ultimate example of integrity. Integrity personified in Jesus. If we want to walk in the way of integrity, we need to follow Jesus. We need to follow his example, his way. So here's a question. Is it possible to be good without doing any good? Is it possible to follow the law and all the rules, but not do good to those around you, to reach the world around you? The first century Pharisees lived that way. They followed the law. That is how they were brought up, to do the right thing, to follow the rules, to earn God's favour and blessing, thinking about themselves and what good it would do for them. The Pharisees in Jesus' time were consumed by the number of followers that they had, by their position, their power, and their influence. Sound familiar? Following the rules, doing the right things is not necessarily wrong, but can sometimes lead us to a place of judgment of others, leading us away from compassion. Have you experienced that? I am a bit of a rule keeper, a goody two shoes growing up, always wanting to do what was right, a bit of a people pleaser. Is that wrong in itself? Well, maybe not. But when I start to put my rule keeping on others, when I start to judge others, when I lose my compassion, that is where it goes wrong. I was being good for goodness sake, seeking after the blessing for myself, wanting people to think well of me. Does that kind of being good really cost us? Is that the integrity Jesus calls us to? It is not that being good doesn't matter. It's not that the law doesn't matter. Jesus was good, but it is the why behind the behaviour that set Jesus apart. If we want to be Jesus' followers, being good is not enough. That is not the example he has set for us. He has more for us. You know, even the Pharisees could see that Jesus was a man of character, a man whose actions matched his words, a man whose integrity was anchored 
to God. It's recorded in Matthew. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. The way of God is the way of integrity. The will of God for us is the way of integrity. Jesus stood strong in the way of God. He followed the will of God. He was not swayed by the influence of the Pharisees. Even when they tried to trap him, to get him to trip up, he remained a man of integrity. He remained free. He wasn't being good just for goodness sake, not even for his own reputation's sake. Andy Stanley says it like this, his integrity was a means to an end, which wasn't him. The Pharisees, the law abiders of the time, tried to trap Jesus. So let's read together in Matthew 22. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. We can imagine the Pharisees saying, hey, hang on a moment. We only ask for one, the most important one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul and mind. We can do that one. We personify that one. We follow the law. This one is all about us. We can do this. But Jesus says a second is equally important and inseparable to the first. If you love God, you must also love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. This is what he calls us to as his followers. Doing what we ought to, even though it costs you. But here Jesus shows us The ought to is not about you. It's about those around you. This is how we know we love God. It's not enough to be good. We need to actively love God by reaching out and loving others. We need to leverage our integrity beyond ourselves. Paul, who was the best Pharisee, the best rule keeper, experienced a major turnaround. He is our example that behaviours can change, that choices can place us on another path. He went from being a rule keeper to being a true disciple, following in the footsteps of Jesus. In Galatians, Paul implores us to serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. See, Jesus brought us this commandment in his end game, the final, final moments of his life, the Passover meal, where he takes following him up a notch. Jesus was talking to his closest followers, those who had walked with him, who he now was relying on to carry on his work. He gave a new commandment, one to replace all others. In fact, Paul went on to call it the law of Christ, to give, serve and love all others just as he gave, served and loved us. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have loved you. You should love each other. 
Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Jesus was not satisfied with being good for goodness sake. Jesus came to be good for your sake, for my sake and for the sake of the world. Not just to keep the law of God, but Jesus's end game was to demonstrate the love of God and oh, how he did that, giving his life for us. He made it clear that a life of integrity is not about me, but those around me. Following after Jesus is not about you, it's about those you can reach around you. The ought to is not about you. Proverbs 11, 3. The integrity of the upright will guide them. Yes, it will guide you. But true integrity drives you beyond you. It's a bit like taking a torch and shining it at your feet. What are you going to see? Your feet. When we are just focused on doing good for ourselves, this is all we see. But when we lift it up, when we start to move it around, when it goes beyond us, it has impact. It opens our field of view. It spreads to others. It helps them. It guides them. It changes our perspective beyond ourselves. Let your integrity drive you beyond you. Let your yes be yes. Look up, take the long view, play the movie forward. Know what is your bowl of stew. Choose the direction that will determine your destination. Make the small yeses that set you up for the big win. And let your integrity drive you beyond you. Shine your light around. Have the courage and resolve to do what we ought to do, to reach others even if and when it costs us. When you are doing what's best for someone else, it costs you. That's being a follower of Jesus. We should be known not by a set of core beliefs or behaviours, but by how well we love others. That is the outworking of integrity. Loving others is the end game. Let's pray. God, we just pray as we step into our everyday lives that you help us to follow Jesus and to walk in the way of integrity. Let us be known as people for whom our yes is yes. Let us be known by how we love others. God, help us to put into practice what we have learnt to be people of integrity. Amen.
let's worship together church in the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless
was my tune Till I met you Come on! I was breathing but not alive All my failures I've tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name image of lifting the torch from our feet and looking around with it yeah you know? like who can you serve this week and who can you bless this week don't forget to spread the light around i love this yeah. i sort of think of uh like scooter and they're like, like <laughs> nervously looking around for something yeah but instead of looking for like a monster or you know it's the caretaker yeah. we're looking for someone to bless it's true it's beautiful <laughs> but in both cases pointless shining it at the ground yeah it's true if you're in a dark room <laughs> really not gonna and help. there's like Oh, uh, there's a ghost. Then you're not gonna be shining the light at the. Gra I mean, I probably would be like, don't. I don't want to know. <laughs> I can't see you. Can't see me. <laughs> but if you want to see the ghost, or in this case, something Someone to delightful, <laughs> then you should shine it up. So good. Uh, well, what a series. Really looking forward to what's coming up next as well. Yes, and I think we've got Mark Pomery next yeah. week. We always love him. And Ooh. then baptisms. And I absolutely love baptisms. If you want to see just how much the staff love baptisms, <laughs> please check out our Insta post from Wednesday. So funny. I genuinely, good. I saw it without the... <laughs> 
the sound on just like I was like quickly flicking through <laughs> and genuinely for a moment was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with Jacob? And then realized, oh, it's a filter. <laughs> it makes sense when you see it. Yeah, <laughs> have a look. Well, we'll see you all uh, next Sunday, 10 a.m. for Church at Home. See you then. When I look back, I can see your hand of love on my past. Even in the times I'd rather forget. I just can't believe it. Love me like that, love me like that. You never let go. Thought I was alone, now I know you were close. I can see it now, you were bringing me home. I just can't believe it. Love me like that, love me like that. Oh, every day gets better when I'm walking with you. Survived it. <laughs>